Okay, Dan, I'm going to do a video for you. This is um, a review of my studio. So I'm just going to try and do this very quickly and uh, try and do it in one take like uh, Meryl Streep. Okay, so um, here's the door where you come in. Nice, big, secure door. Uh, these are paintings. That's a painting from Montreal. That's a St. Helicy's painting that that um, bronze uh, cast is uh, the same composition as that painting from 2006, I believe. That's the St. Helicy's painting from 1995. There's some uh, brutalist architecture style candy dishes. Um, you know, just, and there's a Brutalist architecture style flower vase. There's some cards of uh, some, some of my paintings. But down here, let me, let me move this thing out of the way. This is just, um, this is a, sort of a rolling cart that I use for uh, supplies. Um, these are a couple of St. Helicy's paintings. This is a diptych from 1995. These are some paintings I bought recently by an artist named Jim Plunkett, and it's a burnout light bulb sitting on top of a plate of loose change. There's three of them. I thought that was just a beautiful image for our contemporary lives. Um, that's one of the landscape paintings that I, I did in 2008. It's uh, actually a gilded panel, and then I masked out those uh, tree forms and then I painted the painting and then I removed the masking so that there's um, so the gilding comes through there's an intaglio print of the St. Helices um, this is kind of fun this is a um, storage uh, set up eight feet by four feet um, it's where I keep all the plexiglass and moldings and things like that. But it has a door here that closes so you don't see it. And this is the leftover signage from an uh, exhibition I had here in 2018. This is a reproduction Dutch frame. 17th century, but it's, you know, this is 21st century reproduction. But it's a Dutch frame. It's very cool. It's got the ripple wood and that kind of basket weave thing. All right, so back. Da, 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 That's one wall. And so this is what I call the showroom area. Uh, another landscape painting. There's a baby landscape. There's some little ones. That's a St. Helicy's watercolor from 1992. Bruce Marsh watercolor. Celeste Nelms photograph. Another St. Helicy's, that's a burning bush. <laughs> uh, something from Montreal, something from Montreal. Hey, you know, this one I did in 1985. So I, I might have done this in the studio next door to you. Um, so there's just more St. Helicy's. These are all corner samples that I use to uh, help people select their framing. These are all frame samples and those shapes are all my design. I came up with my own frame design. Now I mean this little flat little flat thing you know everybody has that that's not special but my my idea was to have this this one kind of S curve and then also to have um, a double curve. And without getting into too much explanation, but they're just two shapes. There's, but there's the daddy, the three inch wide, and then there's the baby, half an inch wide, and then um, gra gradual steps, different scales, um, because it's all about proportion in picture framing. 
All right, so here's a drawing for the landscape uh, series, 2008. This is a easel made out of bamboo that I'm making for a client. It's gonna be gilded. Um, that is a charcoal drawing by Joe Santori. Amazing artist. A friend of mine, he's got a studio here in the, in the building. That's uh, the younger sibling of your drawing. That's another photograph by Celeste Nelms. She's awesome. She was also my girlfriend in high school, but we've stayed close. She actually turned me on to art, visual art. I was a musician, and she was the first one who sort of turned me on to that. Here's another landscape drawing. All right, so let's, that, that's the showroom. That's basically the showroom. Don't get dizzy. All right, so here's the library. Oh, guitars. Library. Ta 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 and catalogs. Um, it's really kind of a mess in here, but oh, there's a bass guitar, there's Les Paul, there's a little um, parlor guitar, and then in here's the production area. Here's uh, you know a million tools, uh, some frames hanging up over there. Um, this is a, these are the production tables. They're kind of messy right now, but if they were clear. Um, you know, it's like an L shape that's about 12 feet long by 8 feet. And then I have these ancillary tables that I could put in and make it basically a whole 8 foot by 12 foot table, which sometimes I do need that. Um, I do need that to uh, accommodate large pictures. But back here, so I, this is the storage thing I was telling you about. It's 8 feet by 4 feet, uh, sort of a, what, what I would call a vertical storage rack. And it goes the whole length goes the whole length of the production area and then it's open on this side too see so we pass things through one side it comes out the other side and then like a big sheet of uh, acrylic I can just take from there and bring it over here to the wall sizer so that's a wall sizer so just slide it right in there and it cuts this wall sizer cuts glass plexi and mat board um, 60 inches tall and then infinity long. Um, oh, another guitar. Surprise. <laughs> it's another guitar. This is the uh, Telecaster project sitting uh, quietly off to the side waiting. Uh, the, all these boxes are the Saint, the artworks from the St. Helens uh, exhibition that happened in 2018 down in uh, Dunedin. They have not been unpacked. They're just in storage here taking up valuable space but that's where I store them and and I'm and, you know sell the occasional one but uh, okay so here you, you can see the showrooms up there there's the door um, yeah so um, let's go back over here so this is all fun 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 uh, yeah so there's, oh, there's a little keyboard, MIDI keyboard that I bought that I don't use. There's an abstract expressions painting I did in probably 1998. Um, I'm missing all kinds of things. Well, there's an interesting, that's an Italian style frame. I think it's called a San Savino. Uh, a friend of mine made it. It's a plaster cast. It's a beautiful thing. And, uh, unfortunately, I'm using it for storage for Kleenex and coffee. But there's also this was given to me as a gift by some appreciative uh, wood carvers. Um, more junk, more junk. Um, here's a painting that was done at USF in 1987. It's a black and white, two-handed, black paintbrush in one hand, white paintbrush in the other hand. Um, I still use that technique. Uh, yeah, here's some nice pieces of wood. This is walnut. That's walnut. This is white oak. 
this beautiful stuff. I have like tons of, tons of wood. Oh, this is chestnut. I have to show you my chestnut um, collection. Look how nice that is. That's um, chestnut, you know, it, there was a blight in the early 1900s. Uh, all the chestnut trees got a fungus and they all died. Um, there's a few surviving, but all the American chestnut trees were killed by a, a pathogen from China. And what happened was they um, they would remain standing. They were tallest, the tallest trees in the forest, and they would remain standing. And then they would become infested with bugs. And then they would be taken, they would be cut down and, and used for whatever, you know, covered bridge or a chicken coop or a barn. But that's where the wormy chestnut uh, thing comes into uh the vernacular for furniture that was made in like the 20s and 30s is called wormy chestnut because it has all these wormholes and I, I've, I've bought a bunch of that stuff and I make frames out of that more guitar cases and then back here is the wood shop see I have this uh, thing that kind of I've got the whole thing uh, covered in plastic in, in a plastic and UV shielding acrylic and then I've got this thing, and then back in here is the wood shop. It's, um, it's quite a mess, but this is the wood storage. Um, uh, everything's on wheels, all the tables are on wheels, the, the tools are on wheels, and um, you know, so it's modular. I can move things around. There's the chop saw, there's the table saw, um, there's the drill press, that's the uh, thickness planer, down there is the jointer. So, I, you know, it's like, these are the toy, they're almost like toy size. It's not proper wood shop uh, uh, scale. Uh, there's a downdraft table over there for sanding. Um, but I'm trying to do the most, the, I'm trying to do the maximum with the uh, least amount of, of uh, space because uh, it's really expensive to rent space in New York City, as you might imagine. So anyway, this is the old uh, dirty, messed up wood shop, and then we come back out here, and then we're in the we're in the production area. This is the production area, and uh, la la la. Oh, and this is art storage. So on the other side, you know, where I showed you the uh, charcoal drawing and the things. So this I made into a, a storage area uh, for art storage and frame storage. So it's like a double uh, usage. It is a, a gallery wall on one side, and it's all storage. And I did all the I did all the bins to to go diagonally. Uh, they're not at right angles, so diagonally, which means uh, it's a four by it's an eight foot by four foot L, but on the diagonal, I can actually fit like a nine or ten foot long piece at a diagonal in this uh, storage area here. So back we go, back we go, back to where we started. I hope you have enjoyed your tour of my windowless bunker. Well, it's not entirely windowless. There's some windows in the, uh, there's some windows in the wood shop. But Dan, this is where I spend all my time. Isn't that something? There's a landscape. And with that, I suppose we will say adieu and happy uh, philosophizing to you.